Thank you for attending this wonderful interview today. My name is Bob Sibohar. I am an energy performance sport dietitian here in Colorado. And with me today, I've got Keegan Rosenberry. He is a almost third year at the Rapids uh, backfield defender for the Rapids and Don Gillies. He is the technical director for the Colorado Rapids Youth Soccer Club. So super, super uh, excited to have you two here. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes as we uh, as we chat today about the mental, physical, and nutritional parts and aspects of training, both from a professional athlete standpoint and also from a youth athlete standpoint. So Don and, and Keegan, thank you for uh, joining today. Absolutely. You're welcome. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got a few questions. And, and Keegan, I'd like to start with you. So uh, you've been in Colorado a few years. Uh, you know, you came from Philly. You've, you know, you guys are just past the midway point of your season, getting ready to kind of do the last, last little push of the season. How do you, how do you prepare yourself physically for the rigors of obviously training your, your pathway midseason, like everything, all the stressors of the body? Like, what do you do personally to kind of keep your body fit, keep it healthy from a physical standpoint going into these last couple months of training and competing? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. It's not um, it, it's not easy for sure. Um, obviously, for me, um, this is my sixth year in the league now. Um, it it helps a lot to have a little bit of that experience. You know, I've always believed that you know experience is the best teacher, and um, it's helped me a lot to to feel the grind and and the the difficulties of a thirty four game season because it is a long time throughout the calendar year. So, um, it, it like I said, it's difficult. But um, for me, I feel like. You know, some of the things you mentioned when my sleep, my eating and, um, you know, hydrating, all those things are really in tune is when I'm in my best physical form and um, and even mental form and feeling up for each training session in each game. So um, I think sleep is one of those one of the biggest things for me as well. Um, uh, you know, currently, uh, you know, married, but but no kids, you know, no dogs, no nothing. It's, it's very yeah. easy to be in a pretty routine sleeping schedule and eating schedule and all these things. So. Um, I feel like I'm a re at a really good point in my life where um, it's easy to maintain that that routine and that schedule. And um, and I think, again, that's, you know, maintaining that kind of um, that rigor and, and uh, has helped me a lot and, and helps me kind of continue to stay in that routine each day for training as well. Fantastic. I think if you don't mind, let me let me spin off that sleep thing, because it is so popular for for you name the athlete these days, especially young athletes, I'm talking to a lot of parents and, you know, they're getting frustrated with all the electronic devices and, and everything. Like, do you have a sleep pattern and like a schedule you try to adhere to? Or could you, can you kind of give the younger players out there kind of an idea of, of what, what success markers you use for your sleep? Um, I don't get too technical with, with, uh, you know, things like that. I, I have, you know, learned uh, more recently to try and stay off the electronics or, you know, kind of that blue skirt or that uh, blue light um, close yeah. to, to when you go to bed. But um, for me, it's more just kind of that hours, you know, the, the amount of time that I am really trying to, again, you know, the REM sleep or the deep sleep and all that kind of things right. I'm not very knowledgeable in and I don't have you know, something that tracks that, whether it's a, a whoop device or something like that. But right. um, I've heard a lot of good things about those kind of things and um, is something that I would be interested in. But uh, for me, it's just trying to more or less just kind of a set time, um, trying to get gotcha. to bed at the, at the same time each night and then obviously waking up for, for the same schedule pretty much every day is, is already Perfect. set. So. Yeah, that frequency and consistency, I think, is pretty good with, with the scheduling. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Don, what do you think from the from the youth perspective, what physically – when they're in mid-season, kind of getting towards the, the later part of their season, what are you seeing with these, these younger players? And what, what physically are you trying to teach them? And how are they taking care of their bodies once the season gets into the, the last couple months? Well, during the, the midway point in their season, they, they really should be at their kind of optimum physical conditioning. We have mm -hmm. tapered a lot of the, the load that they've been doing potentially uh, during a pre-season workout, building towards kind of optimum competition. So they're, uh, as Keegan talked about, they're also in a set routine with regards to practice times and, uh, and game times. And so really just trying to manage it as best as possible to make sure that their lives, which are obviously complex for, for young people with school, with trying to have some kind of a social life, which we want them to have, uh, and balance that of, of soccer, um, particularly at the youth club practicing in the evenings. And then they've got their, their homework and then their travel home um, from practice to, it's obviously a, a delicate balance. So making sure that when they are out in the fields, they're taking 
care of the preparation for the activity is important too. Uh, so using the appropriate activation warm-ups and cool-downs um, to make sure that the activity that they're delivering is uh, is done in a, in a safe and effective way at a high enough intensity that they feel that they can cope with it. So uh, aside from that, it's really just taking care of the, the rest and recovery, as Keegan talked about, even just for, for young people too. That, that sleep thing is probably a, a piece that they overlook. Um, yes. I think uh, maturity of professional athletes and people that really do recognise the value of sleep sometimes get missed, particularly in younger younger people that want to try and cram as much into their day as they possibly can. Um, and really just trying to find that, that opportunity to switch off um, uh, and keep them motivated as well for when they come back to the, the fields. Because if they're continually on, they're not getting enough sleep, they're not getting enough nutrition, in, uh, in recovery to perform again and those optimum levels that, that we would like to see them at during the midway point uh, right. of the season would certainly drop off. Yeah, and it's it's tough too because then you you add on their schoolwork, right, and all their their school commitment, homework, and 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 that onto practices and competitions. It it kind of it kind of lends me into my next questions, and that is really around motivation. So if if I may, Keegan, towards the latter part of the season, do you do you have challenges with your motivation kind of keeping your motivation up and more importantly do you use any specific strategies to kind of keep your mental side of things sharp when you get towards the end of the season um yes yeah, another uh, good question it's again that the season is long it is difficult um yeah. uh, towards the end of the year it, it it gets a little bit more exciting for me and it, and the motivation kind of takes care of itself just because um, you, are, you are towards the point of the year where the points seem to matter more, the games start to matter more, right. you're getting into that time where playoffs start. And, um, and that gets, you know, it gets to be a lot of fun, but, um, but kind of now, you know, the, what we refer to as kind of the dog days of summer when there's guys away for, you know, international duty, there's guys that are yep. injured, there's guys um, coming in and out with transfers and the trade windows. And um, yep. that part can be difficult. And, uh, you know, I think, um, I rely on my teammates a lot. I think the, the group relies on each other a lot to just, um, you know, keep it light and, and, and make every day, you know, enjoyable. It's not, you know, that we're coming in and it's, you know, becoming a job for us. It still is us right. showing up to play, you know, the game that we love. And I think right. uh, mentally that is, uh, you know, to be a, a kid for as long as you can with the sport that you enjoy yes. and, and not really feeling like you're, you're showing up for, um, you know, something that pays the bills is, is uh, it's easier said than done, but it makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I love that outlook because it is it is keeping that fun factor in there for sure. Yeah. Uh, Don, what do you think for the young athletes? Like, what do you guys try to teach them in terms of keeping their motivation level throughout a longer season? What kind of strategies are you implementing? Uh, well, we're fortunate to have a, a director of mental performance um, with the youth great. club um, that delivers loads of webinars and, and online resources for, for parents, families and, and our players as well. But Keegan, I think, hit the nail on the head. I think but we call it connecting with the why. Connecting yeah. with, with why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you, you know, driving yourself or either with your families mm -hmm. um, an hour, one way, two hours during traffic or more um, to practice? Why are you putting your body through, uh, through something else? Um, the, the obviously test the, the rigors of it um, rather than playing something that's less or being involved in something that's less physically active mm -hmm. and, and and as I say you know, Keegan mentioned it it's because they love the sport it's because they want to uh, to have fun and, and, and play the game and I think that it's incumbent upon us to continue to remind the, the young people that take part in our teams that that's what it's all about Perfect. Perfect. I think, uh, you know, from, from a mental health standpoint, obviously there's been a lot of press this summer with the Olympics and what we've seen kind of come out of that. We all know we have physical challenges, be it injuries, being it setbacks, whatever it is. Keegan, this question for you, how do you, how do you overcome mental obstacles or mental challenges? I mean, do you have different strategies, be it meditation or, or deep breathing exercises or like when you have those mental challenges, what gets you through those little, those little speed bumps, if you will? Um, yeah, it's, you know, I've, I've been really fortunate in my professional career and I guess, uh, athletic career in general to be, um, you know, relatively successful and not really have too many bumps in the road where I do feel like that's where the mental challenges really come and really get serious. And, right. um, you know, I had a very brief stint in 2017 where I was on the bench, I was healthy and, but just didn't get selected for a number of games, um, throughout the season. And, um, 
And so for me to experience that, I think has been really helpful to, to just have that kind of chip on my shoulder and, and reminder as to, you know, why I'm, you know, training so hard or why I'm putting in the effort every day or why, you know, that feeling continues to drive me year in and year out and game in and game out. And, um, it, I mean, it's really small, but it, I mean, it just, it takes me, you know, a couple seconds, a, a couple moments to, to kind of remember those, uh, those raw emotions and, and things that I really couldn't control because at the end of the day, I'm going to train as hard as I can. I'm going to do everything I can to be on the field. And, and if you don't get selected, it's something that, uh, you know, you don't really have a lot of control over. It's, it's the coach's decision and, and you have right. to live with it. So, um, yeah, that, that's something that I kind of, I, I go back to a lot. And, uh, okay. and like I said, it, it motivates me, um, you know, ex an extreme amount. Right. Right. That's, that's fantastic. I think having that mental picture too, to always kind of replay in your head, but having those strategies, like that, that motivation, like you were saying, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Keegan, let me stay with you as we switch in over to the nutrition component, always a favorite question of mine for professional athletes. When did you find that nutrition actually mattered for you? Like when was that as you were growing up in your developmental stage, when was that aha moment for you? Mm, um, again, I don't want to, I don't want to go too much, but I've been really, really fortunate, obviously as a professional yeah. athlete, some of that is physically active all the time, you know, every single yeah. day, um, you can get away with a lot and it might take a long time for you to realize that, uh, this nutrition side of things can actually be super helpful to me. And, yeah. um, for me, it was, uh, it was actually in college when I kind of started to experiment a little bit and mm -hmm. tried to put on a little more muscle mass and, um, mm -hmm. felt that I was a little undersized and just wasn't uh, developing as much um, you know, muscularly, but, uh, it, but for me, it wasn't, um, it wasn't really an aha moment, but as much as, you know, something that I could really take advantage of and, and kind of, um, you know, mess around with and, and kind of, um, see the different effects and outcomes that, that I could benefit from. So, um, and it's been, it, it's been really cool for me to, to experiment with that and, and learn about and, and use the resources that we have at the club. And obviously, you know, when I was in college with the nutritionists and things like that. So, um, again, maybe not an aha moment, but, um, that was, I guess, 2013, kind of my sophomore year when I tried to, um, okay. really kind of hone in and, and, um, kind of track calories and track, uh, you know, sources of calories and sources of fats right. and proteins and, um, and things like that. And the amount of meals, amount of snacks per day. So, um, it's not as rigid at this point, but, uh, it was yeah. cool to experiment with and, and, yeah. um, and kind of play around with. Okay. Have you made significant changes in your nutrition from college to professional or just little tweaks um, here and there? I would say just little tweaks. Yeah. It's been okay. kind of a, a learning process and a, a work in progress, but you know, nothing too drastic. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Don, what do you guys, what do you guys, uh, what messaging, what nutrition messaging for the younger, younger players out there and, and how, how young do you start kind of infiltrating with the, the positive nutrition messaging? Um, we, well, it depends on, on, on the age, of course, but we really, we start talking about habits more than anything else at a younger age, mm -hmm. um, because nutrition revolves so much about, about wants at, at a young age, like, uh, I, I want sandwiches or, uh, yep. I, I want yep. chips or, or I want, it, you know, if we can create good, good practice habits, whether it's, whether it's what they're doing on the field, then we feel that we can extend that off the field and, and that would extend to their nutrition. Um, so, so what they are preparing in order to, uh, to eat prior to, to practice, okay. how they are uh, recovering um, after practice, um, obviously talking to you as well, Bob, and making sure your messages are, are heard amongst the, the club, and um, whether it's the chocolate milk, um, or anything along those lines that, that allow us to create simple messages that talk about the benefits mm. of nutrition to our players um, when it's easier for them to grab and take whatever's on the shelf or right. whatever's in the, the pantry or, or whatever's easiest. And uh, I'm absolutely not not holding parents and, and players and, and families accountable for that because when there's so many things spinning on a plate at, at, at youth club level, it's really understandable, but I think that the key thing for us is is that habits will form things that stay with you, obviously, for the rest of your life, hopefully. And when, when they're good habits, um, especially when it comes to nutrition, um, it almost becomes part of your identity. It's who you are, it's Actually, second nature. Right. Um, and those benefits can obviously last for a longer time, whether it's 
uh, pre-event competition or whether it's during or whether it's post. So really, um, we start talking about habits in terms of practicing on the field um, at a young age, start drawing attention to, to what things kids are eating in the basic form, whether it's uh, hydrating with water or whether it's taking on some, some quick, easy um, carbs after it to get sugar levels right or whatever it's going to be probably around the kind of eight, nine, ten years old. And, and obviously within the three pathways that we offer at the club are recreational, competitive and elite level. Right. Um, the, the detail in that... Um, uh, in that nutritional uh, uh, discussion, um, kind of increases as the as the players become able to take on more information about it. That's fantastic, and you probably see that nice progression as they develop throughout the club too, from eight years old to fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years old. Correct. Correct, and and of course the demands in the game change at that age group as well right. um, uh, across different genders. Um, the demands for uh, female players. Um, because the formats of the game change at a younger age and they go through maturation a little bit earlier, the nutrition needs to match that, the, the content mm -hmm. of the practice and the, and the demands on their, on their body from a playing perspective needs to match that. Obviously, with boys going through puberty a little bit older, um, right. it means that they are using less energy at a younger age, but that point mm -hmm. comes to them as the same it does uh, for females. And, and the game changes as everybody tends to even out in terms of their physical capabilities. Um, that kind of maturation piece is not so much a factor. Uh, and then it's about the preparation to perform, the performing, and then the recovery and all the pieces in between that tend to be the pieces that separate the, the excellent players out from the players that are very good um, yeah. and, and so on further down the line. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Uh, Keegan, <clears throat> I have a lot of young players that I work with that always ask me one question. What do professional athletes eat? So you don't have to be specific with this, but can you just walk us through like a sample day? Like take us through like a normal, I know there's no normal, depends on training and, and travel and, and competitions and practice, but what does a day look like for you? Like what's a, a day in the nutrition life of Keegan Rosenberry? Um, yeah, so again, luckily at, at this stage of my career, we do have some meals provided for us. The breakfast and lunch is provided. Um, we'll come in, uh, you know, I'll have a coffee on my way in. I like to... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, start my day with that. But as much as I can, I try to drink at least a bottle or two of water before training actually starts. So I get in relatively yeah. early. Um, I'll get into the facility about eight for a 10 o'clock training start. Um, okay. I like to have my breakfast at least like an hour and a half to an hour before the training actually starts to try and just not feel full and, and not feel like something's moving around in there while I'm working. Right. And, um, right. Most of the time for me, it's like a scrambled eggs, maybe a little bit of bacon, but mainly just the scrambled eggs for me is mm. Um, is enough. It's it's simple. It's clean. It feels yeah. um, feels good. Uh, if there's avocado available, I'll throw a little bit of that in there too, just on the side. But um, yeah. and then after practice, again, provided for us is usually some sort of uh, chicken or beef or turkey or something like that with mm -hmm. a pretty much a plain rice, broccoli. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty simple, and and I like that. It's okay. just um, you know I, I think even more so when we when we travel for road games, it's very um it's kind of disciplined it's it's there's, there's not a lot of options but i like kind of having you know the simplicity laid out in front of you and this Absolutely. is what we got this is you know there's not much to choose from and that's that's what you go with so um yeah. you know i'm pretty i'm pretty easy and I'm, I'm you know pretty easy to please but um you know i would say more often than not especially getting closer and closer to match day is a white rice a broccoli a chicken uh maybe a salmon instead of the chicken but um gotcha. and then uh Something I like to do before probably matches more so than trainings is also a banana, probably an hour and a half to an hour before the game. Um, okay. And then dinner uh, can vary. Uh, it's probably the same, you know, at least some sort of protein, whether it's a salmon or chicken um, or a beef, but with rice, uh, maybe um, again, some sort of vegetable and, and, a, and a grain okay. base, but uh, yeah, it's pretty basic. It's, it's, it's nothing crazy, but for me, it, um, it's not complicated. It's easy to, yeah. to stick to. And, um, and again, I talked about the routine before it's easy to kind of stay in that rhythm. Absolutely. Do you ever have a, a late night snack, like a post dinner snack? Yeah, I would say that was one of the things I, I kind of did want to mention is obviously, yeah. uh, you know, nutrition is super important, but you know, there is a time and a place to, to let yourself feel like you can, you know, have something yeah. that maybe you shouldn't all the time. And, um, yeah. you know, I love, uh, a milk and cookies after dinner. Okay. Uh, it's one of okay. my favorite go-tos. So, yeah. um, and I'm not ashamed about it. I mean, I think, I think yeah. every now and then, you know, you have to have that kind of splurge and, um, right. you know, Absolutely. something that you treat yourself to. So, yeah. um, yeah, Every, that's everything my, fits. My yeah, everything that's fits. Right. Yeah. Did you grow up with milk and cookies? I'm just curious. 
Um, yeah, my family has a, a little bit of a sweet tooth. I grew up okay. Uh, okay. with a lot of home cooking and, and yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Nice. And do you, do you currently incorporate any, any chocolate milk and how do you use that within your training regimen and recovery regimen? Yeah. Um, so I actually growing up and, and all through college as well, it was chocolate milk, like right after the workout was done. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, learned about a lot of the benefits to that. And, um, and now currently it's more of like a chocolate milk protein shake, um, kind of mixture, but, right. um, still for me, it tastes amazing. You know, it's just to get yeah. something sweet down here right afterwards is, you know, right. a lot more fun than, you know, just water or whatever it is, but, yeah. um, and then the protein just to, you know, to immediately try to replenish, you know, all the stuff that you're losing during a, during Absolutely. a hard workout. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, when I first learned that chocolate milk was something that was, you know, super beneficial for you after workout, yeah. I was pretty excited just because I, yeah. well, you know, I didn't realize it and it obviously tastes really good. So yeah. Nature's sport drink and it justified it for you. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. So Don, back to you. What, um, we've, we've heard about the great education you give with the young athletes. And, and I love the fact that, you know, you're periodizing their nutrition, looking at their developmental stage, male, male versus female. What are like a few, maybe one or two or three top really nutrition tips that you're giving these young athletes at that stage in their, in their developmental process regarding nutrition? Um, I think the main thing for us, just, just because of the schedule is really just preparation as much as, as you can possibly, possibly do. Um, it's, it's not always fun for, for young people spending some of their time in the car and traveling to and from practice. And yeah. uh, obviously we've got road games and things as, as well and uh, state games, depending on, on, on your, on your team and level of play. Um, but I think the preparation is a piece that, that we would, we would hammer home more than anything else. Um, the, the other, the other probable tip that we would, we would put in there is, is find what, what you like. Um, you know, Kay and just just mentioned milk and cookies type of thing, and I couldn't agree more with them. And and it's something that you know we talked earlier about mental health, and um, I really do think sometimes when you feel that you're in a cage and you have to eat a certain way and a certain time, and uh, it, it, you can become kind of robotic. And there's a difference mm -hmm. between feeling robotic and eating the same things and behaving the same ways, and what habits are. So we talked about habits as well and making sure that, that, that you're doing the things is, is automatic, but it's good habits that we're looking for. So okay. making sure that you're prepared, making sure you find a variety of things that you do like so that you're not just getting into the car and having, you know, uh, a tomato based pasta or something like that Monday through okay. Thursday. And then again, same on the way home from the game on the, on the Saturday right. or Sunday, there are a variety of things. Keys and mentioned loads of things as well. So, experiment find out what you like can i create a list of it and then make sure you've you've got a variety in your um in your plan for from when you're preparing for your your exercise and recovery fantastic perfect perfect keegan one last thing before we wrap up if you could give uh young young athletes just a couple pieces of nutrition advice like what would your top one two three pieces of nutrition advice be to our to our young budding uh soccer players um, I think, man, I think we, we've mentioned routine and schedule and discipline and habits uh, so often with, you know, it doesn't really matter the topic. So I think for me, it's just um, the biggest overarching theme is kind of, yeah, of course, figure out what works for you, what, what tastes good to you, what is functional for you, what makes you perform at your best, but um, getting in good habits and, and eating at similar times, um, you know, eating similar amounts, you know, not obviously... Um, eating too much or, or too little. I think, you know, finding that balance um, is so important. Other than that, um, yeah, I think the, the timing, the habits, probably, you know, uh, personal preference, what works for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the third thing is kind of what I mentioned is, is not feeling like you are, you know, stuck in a box, stuck in a square that you can't really go outside right. of and that you can have a, a meal or a snack or a dessert that, um, you know, isn't going to kill you. It's, it's not that bad mm -hmm. for you if you have it every once in a while. Absolutely. Great, great piece of pieces of advice for sure. Well, Don Keegan, I certainly appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you for engaging with us and, and sharing these uh, mental, physical and nutritional tips. Definitely appreciate your time. And thank you, gentlemen. Absolutely. Okay.